Mr. Marshak, you've had over 30 years as a practicing lawyer in this town. I'm new. I'm green. Tell me, what can I do for this client? What can any one of us ever do, Tony? Oh, we can be grateful, I suppose. Oh, I know. Lieutenant, come Can't on. Talk now. Lieutenant. Can't talk now. You have been allowed to come into this house. You have been given permission to go all through here. You have turned everything into chaos. Now you have bungled my television set. Do you hear me? confession of infidelities with Shirley's uncle and aunt, we might have sent still another man to his death. Purple. I'll kill him! Right now, while the man is still here, I'll pay it. This back in front of your eyes, I'll do it. And I won't touch anything. I swear on my mother's eyes, not a thing. Please, would you let me in? You get the Dega, I get the Picassos. <laughs> Norman, you couldn't tell a Picasso from a Rorschach test. Can anyone? I know well enough what they're worth. Is that all that matters to you, money? Dollars and cents? Is that all? Look, my fellow vulture, if you're going to be here, you're going to be picking the Excuse bones. Excuse us. Lieutenant Colombo is here. Thank you, Mrs. Peck. Yes, Lieutenant, what is it this time? Well, I'm a little ahead of the police car supposed to meet uh, me pardon here. Pardon me, but lady, the... but how do you want me to set the color on that thing? Oh, it's okay, Mrs. Peck. Uh, take care of your TV set. Go ahead. You were saying, Lieutenant. Well, to tell you the truth, I came here, I think, to make an arrest. You think? Well, it's a little bit complicated. Would you mind too much coming with me to the bathroom? Columbo, you're marvelous. You're absolutely bizarre. Mr. Paris. Would you lift me out of the tub? What do you mean, lift you out of the tub? Yes, sir, if you could please try. I'll stay just like this. Well, I could try, yes. Thank you very much. Just try, and I'll stay just like this. Let's see. Oh, you can't get any leverage. Wait. I can't. It must be the angle. That's right, sir. That is perfectly right. And you'll notice, sir, that I'm perfectly dry. I'm not even slippery. I mean, I have my clothes on. And you still could not lift me out of the tub. Uh, officer, no. I'll do that in a moment. Do you intend to demonstrate drowning yourself for us, Lieutenant? Uh, no, sir, but I think I can demonstrate is that your uncle could have died from an electrical shock without showing any marks of burns or anything like that. Now, let's see, uh, 
Officer, would you turn off that water, please? You see, I'm not exactly sure. I think everybody should stand back for a moment. I'm not overly expert on electrical equipment. Oh. All right. Now, suppose Mr. Paris was in that bathtub there, and somebody came walking in, you see. Officer, would you turn on that light, please? Lieutenant, are you suggesting that someone just sauntered into the bathroom carrying an electric mixer? Well, I'm just using this mixer. I mean, anything electrical is what I'm trying to show. Now, here we go. Cannot supersede. Oh. Very quickly now. We should all go very quickly now. Left. Bare left. This is a pretty old house here, as you know, and when they have those old type fuses, the screw in kind, right here. Lieutenant. Yes, sir, just bear with me for a moment, will you? All right, Lou. Sixty-seven seconds exactly. Fascinating. I didn't know that. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Paris. I think he did know that. Know what? Well, you see, sir, you know what bothered me? Right from the beginning, it bothered me how the murderer got into the house after Mrs. Peck switched on the burglar alarm. Well, someone was here shortly before the uh, incident, as I recall, Lieutenant. Come off it, Norman. I said I left the house, and I left the house. Mrs. Peck saw me. It would have been necessary for someone to let the murderer in. Somebody already in the house who could turn off the burglar alarm. Well, that lets me off, I guess, huh? I'm afraid not, Mr. Paris. Instead of leaving the house, you stayed around and you turned off the burglar alarm at the right moment. Mrs. Peck, did you or did you not see me drive out of here, wave goodbye, honk my horn? No, sir. She didn't see you. She saw him. I think you had on the same clothes as your brother, Mr. Paris. I think it was you that drove out and then came back later when your brother let you in. Are you nuts? I resent defamation, Lieutenant. You said you two never talked, except about that agreement. Well, I guess you had to say that in order to keep the guessing game going. But you know, that's what nailed you down. I called the telephone company. They told me that you two have talked maybe 20 times in the last 10 days. You're saying they killed their uncle. These boys wouldn't do such a thing. I'm sorry, Mrs. Peck, but I think this time they needed each other so much that they both did something very bad. See? 67 seconds. 67. It took us 67 seconds to get down here and replace that fuse. But Mrs. Peck's television set was only out for 15 seconds. There had to be somebody else waiting down here to replace that fuse. And somebody had to help lift the body out of the bathtub. One man couldn't have done that alone. And then dried him off with that wet towel I found, and then put him in a sweatsuit, let alone carry him down the stairs. Stop it! It's all right, Mrs. Peck. What's done is done. What's obvious is obvious. I'm just sorry that you had to be here. Shut up! Okay, gents. One more thing. 